Silvana, thank you. All right, take a look at this. This is Tropical Storm Ernesto. Puerto Rico is now bracing for this storm system. And the National Guard has been activated. Start of classes in the public schools canceled and delayed as a result of this storm. I want to bring in meteorologist Larissa Abreu with the latest on the track. Good news for us, at least, it appears it's not going to affect uh, the Florida area. It's, yeah, it looks like it's not going to affect neither Florida or the entire United States. Of course, we are watching for Puerto Rico. We're also watching the Leeward Islands. But as of now, there is a little bit of good news here as well. For one, both of these areas are on the side, on the storm's clean side, so not on the dirty side where we usually have even severe weather embedded within these rain bands. So that's for one. For two, it's also moving very, very quickly, which is also good news. This thing is going to be in and out, impacting Puerto Rico by tonight and then going to be striking the island of Bermuda. We're going to get into its official track in a moment, but right now already bringing rain and wind across parts of the Leeward Islands. And as of the latest five o'clock update, its wind speeds are at 40 miles an hour. So it's still relatively weak, all things considering. These islands can handle it. It's just a lot of rain that it's also producing. So here's the track with it. As it continues here over the next several hours to move west, by the time we head towards the afternoon, it should be increasing at least to around 45 miles an hour. I just showed you the current wind speeds are right at 40. It'll be moving very close to the island of Puerto Rico. In fact, possibly making landfall here as we head towards tonight and into early tomorrow. It should be bringing heavy rain across that part of the island and then it'll curve north as it does. It should intensify at least to a category one storm and then watch what happens as it moves closer and into Bermuda. It should be a cat two, a high end cat two. It possibly models are now bringing this kind of curving back into the eastern part of Canada. It's something that we're going to be watching here closely. Luckily, a trough will be blocking this from entering the U.S. Either way, we're going to have a very watchful eye on Ernesto as it is our storm that we're closely monitoring. As far as where we are in the tropics or where we are as far as hurricane season is concerned, September 10th is peak. And then after that, chances begin to dwindle. Feels like numbers here closer to home in the upper 80s and low 90s. It's a hot day and it will be an even hotter afternoon. By the time the kids head to school, low 80s, that's going to be the air temperature, but feeling more like we're in the 90s because of the added humidity. We should also see blazing sunshine here for the first half of the day. By the time we head towards after school hours, it'll be hot with temperatures climbing to 94 and a few inland thunderstorms cannot be ruled out. I always mention Whenever we have these high heat days and of course the high humidity, it's very important to know the difference between a heat exhaustion and heat stroke. If you are experiencing a heat exhaustion, you usually feel dizziness. It's you're thirsty, heavy sweating, even nausea. But a heat stroke is a little bit more serious. You want to call 911 and you want to get yourself into a cool location. And remember, always remember your pets as well. If you're hot, they're hot too. Seven day forecasts, you're going to continue to feel the heat at least through Thursday. By the time we head towards Friday, temperatures slightly come down and rain chances also come up, which will help with the heat and humidity. And then the weekend looks a little bit drier, but not too bad, Joe. We're going to see those temperatures right around 92 here on Saturday.